My name is Brandon Satram, and I'm the VP of Developer Experience and VP of Product at Blues. Blues is a hardware forward SaaS service company that is really built to help our customers connect their physical products and build data-driven intelligent solutions. Now, a lot of the way that that works for us is by enabling what we call wireless harmonization. It's unblocking and unlocking a lot of the mess and complexity in the IoT to enable customers to build solutions where they don't have to pick their radio access technology up front. They don't have to wonder where their devices are physically located. They don't have to wonder how they build or how they bring all of these disparate data flows together into their ultimate cloud applications. So we build a series of products that are designed to really solve that problem of, of disparate complexity in the IoT space and harmonize those key areas of radio access technology, device location, and data flow. With radio access te technology, what that looks like is how the devices are actually physically connected to the cloud over some form of wireless RAT, right? And so in that case, what Blues provides, and starting with cellular, is cellular Wi-Fi, cellular plus Wi-Fi with failover, and LoRa and LoRaWAN network support. And it's all in the same form factor using the same JSON-based API. What that means is that our customers can actually build solutions without having to decide up front how that device is going to be physically connected. They can prototype on Wi-Fi and deploy on LoRa. They can prototype on cellular and deploy on Wi-Fi if they prefer. It ultimately doesn't matter because they'll be building the same application that serves all of those needs. This is actually critical for many, many customers because we're unblocking a lot of that complexity to product development and IoT that hampers that first project or that first set to 100 devices that what I like to refer to a lot of times is the, the pilot or POC purgatory, right? Where you have gotten excited about getting started with an application and you're blocked very early on because you have to make all of these choices before you actually see data streaming over the network onto some dashboard, which is the ultimate point of your application. And so by enabling that, by enabling Enabling you to defer many of those decisions to later on down the line, it allows our customers to move faster and know that when they do come to time to deploy, they have a broader swath of deployment options at their disposal. This idea of being able to defer the connectivity choice later on the line is really important for a lot of product types, but it's especially critical for what we've seen in the electric vehicle service equipment area. Right, where you're building a series of applications that are about charging infrastructure, monitoring of that infrastructure. You may be deploying all over the world in remote areas so that your electric vehicles can be serviced and can be charged in remote areas as well. And a lot of times those solutions don't add connectivity by default because it just becomes a let's deal with it later sort of situation. They need to get the infrastructure up fast. They need to be able to service their customers, their ultimate clients. And so that decision to make it, to make a connected product gets deferred. But what we have started to see is that by unblocking that complexity or by, by unlocking the simplicity of the IoT through wireless harmonization especially is that EVSE customers can make choices, uh, can actually start building a connected product and know that when they're building that device that's going to be in an area with great LoRaWAN coverage that they can use the exact same device as they do in one that's better serviced by cell or cell plus Wi-Fi. This is really useful because the reason why EVSE businesses and customers tend to pursue building connected solutions in the first place is because they want to monitor how their infrastructure is doing, right? It's about predictive maintenance, it's about performance and service analytics, knowing how often are the charging bays being visited, did you build enough, did you maybe uh, build too many, how, how can you make decisions in a remote network across countries, across continents with that infrastructure and building a connected solution tends to be the only way uh, for our customers to be able to do that. Ultimately, by making those decisions of building a connected solution and adding things like predictive maintenance, predictive monitoring, all of those great things, what that enables a lot of these EVSE customers to do is start to build an as-a-service offering into their products, right? So now it's not just about setting up the monitoring infrastructure and having a truck drive around and pull the data off a flashcard and send it out to a cloud service manually, but having real-time insights about how that infrastructure is being used, how it's being deployed, how it's being managed, and the customers building that infrastructure have the ability to add that revenue stream, add that as-a-service model into their offerings as well. But being connected also gives those customers and those EVSC infrastructure providers the ability to provide over-the-air firmware updates. And we have found that over-the-air firmware updates are one of the most valuable pieces in the IoT. It is almost table stakes at this point. If your connected solution doesn't have the ability to remotely update its capability, it may, not, may as well not be a connected solution because someone is going to have to go and visit it to manually update the firmware or service the firmware on that device. 
And this is an area where we actually think Blues shines quite a bit because the way that we facilitate over there firmware updates is really twofold. One is firmware updates on our module, on the note card itself. Another way is what we call outboard DFU, where we can actually have the note card manage and update the firmware on the ultimate host itself that is managing the fleet or managing uh, those charging bays uh, at that infrastructure provider to begin with. And this is actually really exciting because what it ultimately leads to is devices that are effectively unbrickable. If you ultimately push it or accidentally push a firmware bug down to the device and now those devices are bricked or unrecoverable, our, our outboard DFU approach enables the note card to step in and recover those devices for you rather than again having to roll a truck out or someone to manually service the device at that point. In addition to enabling new as a service revenue streams for EVSE charging infrastructure and enabling over the air device firmware updates so that the systems can be monitored and managed remotely. Uh, it also enables the ability for customers to future-proof their installations if there are improvements to the wireless charging capabilities. So there's improvements to the way that the bays themselves actually operate or the function of the hardware, the actual infrastructure on the ground. Building a connected application allows you to do that. It's both remote monitoring, remote updates, and remote control. And those are all very important aspects of building a connected solution for anything, but, a specific, but specifically in this space. The challenge of building connected EVSE products, I kind of already hinted at, and that is this idea of the complexity of starting with wireless, starting with a piece of wireless connectivity and needing to make a bunch of decisions up front or feeling like it's gonna add six to nine months to your development cycle or a few extra hundred dollars to your, to your bill of materials to be able to deploy the product in the first place. So that complexity a lot of times keeps people from starting, but it's not just the complexity. It's not just the idea of having to choose a radio access technology, but it's the idea of the security risk, right? Unfortunately, in the last decade, security risk kind of goes hand in hand with IoT. When people think about IoT, they think about devices that are turned into botnets or devices that end up getting hacked and taken over. It's sort of the unfortunate reality of being and operating in this space. Uh, and so a lot of the complexity there for ESEV providers is just how, why would I want to make something connected to the internet if somebody's going to be able to take it over, remote into it, ultimately ruin or mess up my infrastructure and ruin my day. There's also the challenge of flexibility and compatibility. A lot of connectivity providers sort of po point you down this, this way or this, these uh, guardrails of needing to build a solution that checks all of these boxes. Not only does it have to be cellular only, you have to use X microcontroller, maybe they only support SDM32 or Nordic. Uh, you have to use this programming language, you have to connect the device in this way, only these form factors are supported, whatever it may be. A lot of things that keep EVSC providers from getting started is that, is that sort of complexity of either too much choice or too much constraint when they're building an ultimate solution. The last piece is compliance and certification. It goes hand in hand with security in a lot of ways. But if you're building a wireless product, it changes how that device needs to be certified, not only to go to market, but how it can operate in the wild. And so it's really no surprise that with these four things taken together that many providers out there, they want to build infrastructure, they want to build EV charging capabilities across the world to service their customers, but this decision to make it connected as well, again, just kind of tends to get deferred because we feel like it's a decision that we would rather make later rather than deal with the complexity of it now. And at Blues, we believe that all of these challenges are solvable. Uh, that we can actually unwind the complexity in this space and make it possible for customers to actually build connected solutions once and for all. And for us, the way that that works is with two products, the NoteCart and NoteHub, our cloud service. They work together as a symbiotic pair, but they touch different pieces of a customer's deployment. The first piece, the NoteCart, is a wireless module. It is a uh, small 30 by 35 or 42 millimeter module that exists with an M.2 edge connector, and it's designed to be embedded in your ultimate application so that you can field upgrade it whenever the time comes. Now, the note cart itself is a wireless IoT device that operates on cellular, cellular plus Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, or LoRa. And you choose the device and ultimately deploy that into your application. But we provide the same API programming interface, the same JSON-based API, regardless of which one of those radio access technologies you're using. So you don't have to make a decision about going with cellular and being locked into all of the complexities that that creates, or going with LoRa and LoRaWAN and sort of having to deal with that specific set of decisions, secondary decisions that that leads to as a result of that. You have a single programming interface, a single device, 
with a series of radio access technologies depending on which, which one you choose to deploy. And for our EVSC customers, the value that this creates is the ability to develop, build a solution knowing that they have a series of options at their disposal when it comes time to deploy, whether they deploy in a LoRa and LoRaWAN covered area or whether it's an application that's going to need to be hosted on cellular with Wi-Fi failover or something along those lines, right? They can develop and then decide ultimately where that goes. And all that data, regardless of radio access technology, then ultimately makes its way into the cloud through the other half of our solution, which is NodeHub. Now, NodeHub is a SaaS service, but it is not an IoT platform, and it's not designed to be the end-all, be-all for your everything you can imagine in your IoT deployment, because we wanted to keep it focused on the things that our customers consider to be most important, and that is secure transport of device data into a cloud service, and then very quickly and ultimately secure transport into an ultimate different cloud service that our customers manage, but it's the cloud service of their choice. It could be AWS, it could be Azure, it could be Snowflake, it could be Databricks, you name it. Ultimately, the customer knows where they want their data to go, and our job with NodeHub is just to get it there as quickly and safely and securely as possible. And those two things together, the NoteCart and NodeHub, function as a symbiotic pair. They work together. They're designed to solve that messy middle piece of connectivity so customers can take any device, any sensor, securely send that data ultimately into their own cloud application. There are a number of advantages to using Blues for any application, but specifically for EVSE. Uh, one of the first of those is wireless harmonization. It's something that I already hinted at. But it's very powerful, which is why we tend to talk about it so much. This idea that our customers can make a decision about that radio access technology at the point of deployment and not up front. So for EVSE customers, like I've said before, what that means is that you can ultimately build your application, deploy on LoRa or LoRaWAN, deploy on cellular, deploy on Wi-Fi at the point of deployment. And not only that, but it is future-proof in the sense of, uh, of sunsets in cellular. And this is actually something that is, it hits, hits hit a lot of customers in the IoT space, this concept of betting on 2G and 3G, deploying a device in the, in the field with a cellular modem soldered down onto the board, and now being told that the network is being sunset and your device that's operating over the 2G network in the field in three months is now not going to be able to communicate at all and not being able to upgrade that device. The note card is built to be field upgradable because it's on an M.2 connector you can easily plan for swapping out. And it's not just swapping from cell to LoRa or cell to Wi-Fi, but swapping from narrowband to wideband or swapping from a sunset cellular technology into a newer one that'll be supported for the next 10 years or beyond. Another benefit is quicker time to market. A lot of times the hardest part of building any connected solution is that first couple of months or even that first six to nine months when you're getting to your first hundred devices. And the reason for that is not just because of the complexity of choosing radio access technologies, but it's also just the challenge of programming a connected device. If you make a choice to use LoRa, you have one way of communicating with the device. If you make a choice to use cellular, you're writing AT commands straight out of a modem manual from 1983. We are literally in a world where you have to, once you make those decisions, you're spending a lot of time just learning the unique way that that radio access technology communicates to the cloud. When really all you're trying to do is establish a connection, send data, and you're done. And so what we provide when it comes to speed of early, of early development is a JSON-based API in the note card. If you're configuring the note card's connection to the cloud, it's JSON. If you're configuring how often it synchronizes to the cloud, it's JSON. If you're sending data to the note card that you ultimately want to get through NodeHub and your cloud service, it's still JSON. And not only that, but the way that we've built the note card is it doesn't force any decisions upon you in terms of microcontroller or single board computer that you might choose to use. Those, are cho those decisions are yours to make. And because we provide a JSON-based API, any microcontroller, any single board computer that can write and print strings can talk to the note card. It's as simple as that. And what that ultimately gives our customers is the ability not to get their first device deployed, but the 10th, the 100th, the 1,000th, and beyond. That speed to market is critical and important for many of our customers. And we can't finish this conversation without talking about security. That's obviously important. As I said earlier, it tends to be one of the biggest things that people think about when they talk about IoT. And part of the reason for that is because the way that we've done security in the past in IoT development is sort of security as an afterthought. We build the connected solution for the POC or the prototype, and we don't worry about keys and certs because, hey, it's just the first one. It's fine, it's not a big deal. But then when it comes time to deploy, now we have to figure out how do we securely connect to the cloud service? How do we provision new devices in? How do we make sure that only 
valid devices end up on the network and things like that. And so what's ended up happening in the past is that customers are deploying solutions with keys baked into the firmware, devices that can be subject to man in the middle attacks, or worst of all, because those devices can't be updated over the air, that they end up, uh, they end up being compromised and unrecoverable. They find themselves as a part of yet another botnet. The way that we've taken this approach at Blues is rather than doing cloud-based provisioning, rather than doing some sort of complex provisioning and claiming process that really ends up becoming a pain at time of deployment, is that we bake security in by default. The way the note card handles security is with sensible defaults. And there's really two pieces to that story. One is every note card includes a secure element with keys baked into the point of manufacture. So rather than cloud-based key rotation or even cloud-based provisioning, the note card has its keys embedded, they're secure, and you can't reach them. It's not possible to actually break into the device or manually take over and have a device that can be a zombie device connected to our note of cloud service. The other piece is that the note card communicates off the internet. Right? So all of our cellular note card communications occur over cell network infrastructure and over our private VPN servers into our own cloud infrastructure before we then securely send that information out to your, uh, your ultimate cloud as well. Another benefit that is really important to our EV charging customers especially is power efficient hardware. The note card is actually low power by default and this is something that was somewhat of an innovation when we launched the product first in 2020 because the idea of having a cellular power or low powered cellular device was very difficult to achieve, but the note card, the cellular note card at least, is designed to operate at eight microamps when idle, which is actually quite astounding. Our lower note card operates at an even lower power level. And this allows customers to be able to deploy an application without assuming that the cellular or the wireless connectivity is a big part of their power budget. And so you're not having to account for incorporating some high power device into your application. Because the note card is low power by default, it can be charged, it can be powered over batteries, it can be recharged through solar, and you can deploy it in a whole wide variety of situations, whether mobile or fixed. And then finally, location tracking. I talked earlier about wireless harmonization in the context of harmonization of radio access technologies, but the location piece of this is important to us as well. So when we talk about harmonization of location, what we mean is that the note card actually enables multiple levels of device location depending on where your device is located and how it's needed. You can use GPS, GPS and GNSS for an outdoor deployment. So for our cellular devices, we also provide cellular cell tower location and cell tower triangulated location. And for our Wi-Fi and cell plus Wi-Fi devices, we provide something that we call wireless triangulation, where the device can actually Wi-Fi scan access points and then give you a sense of where your device is located using our cloud service. Something that we call best location, which is our summary or our idea of where the device is actually most likely located, depending on when we've last communicated it, et cetera. So our customers can actually rely on, rather than wading through all that different location data and trying to decide which is the most accurate, we can give them that information by default. And the reality is that, that in the IoT space in general, there's a lot of complexity. In the EV charging space, especially as we very quickly build out infrastructure to manage and to deal with the electrification of grids all across the world, we're in this world where we're building and deploying quickly. We don't have time to wait. And rather than customers choosing to defer or not doing connectivity because we don't have time to wait, we really believe that Blues is the right solution to consider, even if you don't have time to wait, because we can help you get there faster. The Blues team and I hope to see you at CES in Las Vegas in 2024.